Hey, I'm James from Slipstream Creations. This 1980 Kawasaki KZ750 LTD is one of the more challenging builds that we've taken on. Stylistically, this was a tricky one to pull off, but in the end, we think this is one of the cleanest KZ750 LTD transformations we've seen. This project had been abandoned by a previous owner. Our customer bought this bike as a basket case in the hopes of turning it into a clean looking street scrambler. This motorcycle literally came to us in pieces in a four foot tall wooden crate. We actually have a video of that unboxing that I'll link to in the description of this video below. I mentioned that this bike was a big stylistic challenge for us, and most of that was because of the cruiser styling of the KZ750 LTD. This bike had a longer raked fork and a low, almost king and queen style seat. One of the big things we wanted to pay attention to though, was the overall geometry of the bike. Our goal was not to turn this into a dual sport bike of some sort, so we wanted to make sure that the rake and trail and all the suspension geometry stayed in a safe, comfortable range, and that there weren't any unintended consequences to the suspension modifications that we would make. To give us the cleaner lines we were looking for, we fabricated this custom subframe that gives us a good visual belt line to work from. The owner of this bike is around my height, and we were able to get this seat a little bit higher to a nice comfortable range, um, but also a lot flatter than the stock seat. We also fabricated some custom rear shock mounts that allowed us to mount some slightly longer shocks to give us a little bit more travel in the rear. To account for these frame updates, we also had to lengthen the center stand and the side stand, which is definitely one of those loose ends that a lot of people don't really think about when they're building one of these bikes. The other big thing that really determined the overall look and feel of this bike was the tank. The stock tank sort of set up high and sloped towards the back with a real fine taper so it didn't feel like it had much volume. We wanted something that could hold a little more visual weight and maybe give the bike a bit more of a broad shouldered look. We ended up going with a 1978 KZ650 tank. This tank was not a direct fit so we did have to fabricate some custom mounts in the front and in the rear in order to get this all aligned with the subframe. One of the big challenges with the LTD model though, is that the triple trees have very little offset, much less than the standard KZ750. That means when you turn the handlebars to full lock, the actual fork tubes would touch the tank. In order to account for this, Kawasaki made the stock tank of this LTD model not only smaller, but it also set it back quite a bit, and a lot of the frame was visible behind it up here. We wanted to eliminate as much of that as we could, so we replaced the stock steering stops uh, to remove a couple of degrees of angle at full lock. That gave us a nice balance between tank position and the total steering angle. One of the things I didn't really care for on this KZ650 tank was the gas cap. It had a really big, bulky, angular gas cap and didn't really flow well with this bike. What we ended up doing was welding in a section from a 1970s Honda tank and using the gas cap from that. Uh, it's definitely a personal preference, but I think it's a little bit more compact and streamlined and flows a lot better with this bike. One of the few requirements we had from the customer going into this build was that we paint the tank in a Ford color called Green Gem Metallic and that we coat the wheels in burnt bronze. We ended up using that Ford Green on the tank as our base uh, for our Kawasaki graphics and we actually pick up some of the same bronze color from the wheels as an accent here. We actually also ended up painting a a dark panel on the side of the tank and a pinstripe. It's just a couple of shades darker than the base green and you only really catch it in the right light. To complement the new subframe and tank, we made a custom seat pan here and custom upholstered with a clean and understated cover for it. We tried to pick up the lines and angles of the subframe here for the back panel of the seat to just really try to tie everything together. We used the stock mag wheels from the KZ750 LTD. The front is a 19 inch, which gave us plenty of options for dual sport tires, but the rear wheel here is a 16 inch. That really limited our options as far as dual sport tires go. Um, the good thing was we're not really going for a real aggressive off-road kind of ride, so we were able to put some Kenda K761 tires on here, which are a real nice 50-50 dual sport tire. As I mentioned earlier, we Cerakoted these wheels. That's a burnt bronze color, which really ties in with the tank design uh, and the customer's needs. This engine came to us having already been gone through by the customer. They had already checked it out, so we didn't expect any major work on this. But after finishing the bike, we did find a fairly significant oil leak from the cylinder base gasket. We ended up replacing all the gaskets and seals and actually went ahead and repainted with a more durable, fuel-resistant epoxy-based paint. The side covers were all powder coated in a matte textured black. 
We're using the stock carburetors on this bike. We just cleaned them and vapor blasted them, and we installed the DinoJet kit to get them really dialed in. Uh, the customer had supplied these pod filters, which actually ended up working out great on this bike. As I mentioned earlier, this bike came to us completely disassembled, but it did come with a bunch of new parts, including a brand new 4 into one header and a new muffler. Unfortunately, when it came time to fit everything up, we just couldn't make it work. It just didn't fit. We ended up making a custom 4 into 2 setup here using the stock headers and some aftermarket mufflers. Then the whole kit was Cerakoted in black. The hydraulic brakes were cleaned up and powder coated and rebuilt with some kits from Brake Crafters. We actually have a video on that process that I'll link to in the description as well. We got these mounted up with new rotors, new master cylinders, and some new custom stainless steel braided brake lines. One of the things we did a little bit differently on this build was we used a little bit larger lithium battery on this bike and the frame just lent itself well to mounting the battery box down low here just above the swing arm. This battery box was fabricated out of steel. We built it to use this simple thumb screw to open the lid. And in here we have an eight cell lithium anti-gravity battery. That power feeds all of our LED lights, including the headlight. We have the headlight mounted up here with a custom fabricated mount. And we tried to pick up the shape of the front edge of the tank here to make a little sense of this mount. I always really like to try to keep the headlight low and tight to the frame as possible. And sometimes the interference with the speedometer and tack cables can cause some problems, but we think this actually worked out really well. The small LED turn signals also give the bike a little bit cleaner than vintage look. One of the other nice touches here is that we picked up headlight bucket and turn signals that have a real similar egg-shaped profile on the back here, so they feel like a set. We carried that theme through to the rear here as well. We actually couldn't find a an off-the-shelf taillight that had the same profile and egg shape for the taillight bucket here, so we ended up fabricating this taillight bucket out of a piece of billet aluminum. We have the taillight mounted here to a custom rear fender uh, that we fabricated out of steel. I always like to keep, keep fenders on the bikes, even if they're fairly small, especially the inner fender here on the rear. It definitely helps keep mud and muck off of the engine and air filters and everything underneath. We also modified the stock front fender here to match our custom rear fender and powder coated them both in a matte black. To finish everything up, we added some nice wide dirt bike style handlebars here and some OEM style control switches. We replaced the stock gauges with a mini speedo and tachometer units with some built-in LED indicator lights as well. Overall, this was a challenging build, but we're really happy with how it turned out. If you think about what the KZ750 LTD in stock form looks like and where this particular bike started for us, the transformation is pretty dramatic. Let us know in the comments if you like this build and if you would have done anything differently. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe and like.